Hey there and welcome to my office. Today you're on the road with me as we cast a bilateral patient for new prosthetics. So the transtipular amputation and prosthesis was from 2013. He had a more recent left transfemoral amputation due to poor circulation and blood clots, but he is very independent, very motivated, strong guy, and wants to get back to walking. Before we get into the casting, he had a pretty big callus, just hardened skin area on his distal limb. This is just one week's difference using lanolin on his distal residual limb and his, you can see just in that one week, how much healthier that skin is. So let's get started with the cast. It's probably gonna feel snugger because that other one is pretty worn. Yeah. How does that feel though? Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and bend your knee for me. And that feels okay? All right, yeah. and relax. And remind me, because I know last time we talked about how this bone's a little bit longer. Do you ever get pain and pressure on this outside here? Mm, a little bit. Okay, but mainly here? Yeah, mainly up there, right in that way. Okay. Any pressure up here too, or just no, in this area? Just, just this Yeah, and most of that's just, that socket is big. <laughs> yeah. And how much walking and stuff were you doing with it? Well, no more than right, right in here than that right now. Okay. That's how much walking I'm doing, you know, for up and down the hall. Right. So you're just nine and two is old up to hopping on this side with a walker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So once we get you this side, that will make it easier yeah. on this side too. Yeah. So you're not putting so much this pressure. Is the side I can't worry about because the bone is still sore. Okay. Yeah. Big bone. Yep. And that's where the massaging on this side will help too. Yeah. And Robbie, how long ago was this surgery? About two months. Two months, yeah. So you're still pretty early out yeah. from surgery. Yeah, on this side. Yes, yeah. So it, and it takes a while, even though it looks good on the outside, it takes a while for that yeah. underlying tissue to heal up. Yeah. start with the fiberglass start at the top I'll do a couple wraps at top and work my way down and then we have these pieces that these buckles help hold into place mm -hmm. and this basically helps create channels in the socket in between your muscle bellies mm -hmm. so that you can it's going to give you better control and so that it doesn't twist on you yeah. while you're walking and then also helps you be able to keep using your muscles to keep them strong. All right. So we got one in the front right here. We're gonna have one in the side right here. Mm -hmm. And that basically just helps support that long bone in there. All right. And then you're gonna have one right below. So lift up for me. That bone that I was feeling for mm -hmm. earlier, that one's gonna go right underneath. Oh. And then those straps kind of help hold everything together. Okay.
Now I hope it is obvious to you that this patient is bilateral. He has amputations on both his left and right side. And as a bilateral patient, he's going to need a set of feet and a prosthetic knee for that left side that allows him to get back to his previous level of independence safely and not put a lot of stress and strain on his residual limb. He was living independently in an apartment, getting around on his own, doing his own cooking, cleaning, all those things on his own. And so we want to be able to get him back to that level of independence. But for some reason, that is not as obvious to some insurance companies. <coughs> United Healthcare. Now insurance will deny him his feet and knee because they are because they are K3 componentry. And I will be doing a future video breaking down K levels, but for now just understand K levels, you're either one, two, three, or four, and they basically describe your activity level or your potential for certain activities. Uh, mainly the potential to change walking speeds. K levels were originally designed to describe a patient's functional abilities in relation to being able to use a microprocessor knee. So they were never meant originally to describe different levels of feet or different categories of feet. And they weren't designed to apply to bilateral patients. But insurance doesn't care about any of that or the patient's history or their current activity level, previous activity level, or their goals. They just see that he's an older gentleman and there's K3 codes. So they say denied. But we will continue to fight for this patient so that he can get the appropriate components the appropriate prostheses that he needs to be able to go back to functionally independently and to be safe and to keep his residual limbs healthy. And I know there are many other similar stories out there associated with the frustrations of insurance and getting appropriate care covered. I just encourage you to be your own advocate and be working with a prosthetist that is gonna fight with you and for you to get what you need to meet your goals. So that's a little bit of his story. That's a little bit of where we're at and hopefully we'll be able to get those approved for him soon because he is anxious to be able to get back up and walking again. Like always, if you have any questions, please drop them down below and I will be happy to answer them and I wish you the best in your journey, whatever that looks like.